Hello, this is Nick Ritter again. Welcome back to another Cavalry video. This is a tutorial about how to make a bar graph in Cavalry. And I'm going to be recreating a graphic that I'd animated a couple years ago for the original Lumi deodorant ad. It was a really fun project to work on. First up, let's make the bar graph itself. So select the pen tool here, and you click out on the canvas, hold down shift to make it a straight line. It'll snap to 90 degree angles. I click somewhere down below, leave a little bit of space for words. And then drag out, holding shift again. I will go to about there. And then press enter, and that kind of ends the shape. If you double click on that editable shape layer, then you can see its attributes that you can edit. So this is the parameters, options, whatever you want to call them. This is where they are. Now under stroke, I'm going to set the width of that to 12. And then let's go with a round join style as well as the round cap style. So the original one that I did has a bit more of a rounded corner. Now you can add more Bezier points, more power to you, but the great thing about cavalry is you can do it procedurally. How you might ask? Under editable shape in the attributes shape tab, you'll see a deformers option. Hit the plus button and there's this nice bevel option here and you can see it already made a difference. And in fact, that might even be perfect. I'm gonna double click on that and show you some of the options. Radius, changes how big the radius is. And then you can choose between fillet and chamfer, I think is how you pronounce it. Chamfer keeps it a straight corner, fillet lets it be round. We'll call this like graph lines. Next thing is to do the horizontal scale lines. I want the scale lines to be about the same width, so holding down shift, about the same width as the bar graph. I did just draw this line over top the other one, so there's the end. Let's see, hit a few extra layers. So with this layer selected, you can click Create a Duplicator. It automatically chooses Grid as the distribution, but I'm going to pick Linear and then Vertical. So when the duplicator is created, it hides your original layer down here. You can still kind of see that it's popping up here in this corner. But if you try to change the position, you notice that the duplicator does not change position. So I'm going to hide uh, that original layer, and then just working with the duplicator, you can change the position through these options. So we'll just line this up on the graph here, about like that, and then make sure that we have six of these things. Then we can increase this. I'm going to change this from fit to step. That's looking pretty good right there. And I do want to make sure that the stroke is also round. Okay, round cap. Excellent. Now we can call these scale lines. I'm not sure what they're called exactly. I'm not a statistician. And then we can select all of these, do Control G. It creates a group and hit enter to rename and we'll type in graph lines. Keeps things a little more organized. Next, let's type in our text. These can be any text you want, obviously. So there's option one. I want this to be center aligned and then baseline like so. If you hold down Alt or Option and then double click, it'll like solo that one layer inside your attribute editor. Decrease the font size. And I'm gonna go with a black weight. The placement of these will likely change. So creating the next text layer, I can just duplicate this, Control D. And that's honestly what I did on the original graphic when I was using After Effects, but we're in Cavalry right now. So I'm gonna show you the Cavalry way to do this. It's a little bit more work, especially if you're only doing two elements, like you might as well just animate them both separately. But Cavalry is meant to be scalable, gives you options, helps you be flexible through the course of your project and not just primarily in the design phase. All that to say, I'm gonna use the duplicator rather than duplicating. So again, up here, there's the duplicator, change it from grid to linear. I'm gonna keep it horizontal this time and then change this to count of two. Let's move the duplicator down and then increase our size. It, we are gonna have three options and the third one's gonna be like our emphasis option. So I'm gonna 
leave some room for it. So they both say option one because it's just copying this one text shape, which says option one. So if you press control period, a search bar pops up for all the different nodes that you can add. We'll look up text array, I'll hit enter. And we have a layer added. We also have the layer in our attribute editor. Open up the text array as well as the text shape. So this is where we add our list of text options. So in this case, we'll do option one. And in this case, we'll do option Two, and then we will click and drag this, this little blue icon here. So this is our data flow. I'll drag it over onto text and let go. And you'll see magically that now our duplicator replaced the two copies of the same text for two different text options. And we could change these to be whatever we want. I'm gonna do the whole layout first and then we'll get to the animation. I'm gonna group these together using control G once again, and then enter, hit to click it again, I think enter to rename, call this labels. And then let's go ahead and add the bars of the bar graph. I click and drag a rectangle out like so. You can also hold down alt option and click the square tool to create a perfect square right in the center of your composition. So inside of the shape tab of this rectangle, I'm going to change the radius mode from simple to complex. Now what that does in simple mode, you can change the corner radius and it changes all four corners. Make this a little bigger. Changes all four corners. But you notice there's these other options, top radii, bottom radii, and complex, those become editable. They all default to five. So I want the bottom two to remain as just sharp corners. And then I want the top ones to come out um, to about, I will say 20. And then I always want these corners to be the same relative to each other, the same roundness. So I can pipe the left value into the right one. It works the other way too. But this way I can change just the left value and the right changes at the same time. So back to 20. There's our first one. I'm gonna call this bar. And then just like with our text, create a duplicator, change this to two, increase our size a little bit. And then we just have to reposition these that's looking pretty good. Just like the text, these are the same height. When I change the height of the source bar, it will change the height of both of them. And then another problem, when we change the height, it changes both uh, the top and the bottom at the same time. But we just want these bars to grow up. So here's the fix. So under deformers, you can add the align behavior. Open up the align behavior and we'll look at our Y position and then move it all the way to one. It looks like they moved up. They kind of did, but that's just because the anchor point is now at the bottom. Whereas before the anchor point is in the middle, this little circle there. So now I will lower them one more time when I go up and then the top moves down when I go down, but it doesn't go below our graph. Okay, so that fixes the anchor point issue, but then there's the issue of multiple bars. They have different data again. This is dealt with by an array. You can do control period and you can look up an array, or you can also look at the bar and under size, right click here, click add array. And then there's this value array and we can set it to only go to the Y value. So when I click that, then that creates a value array node for us. We don't have to search for it. And then it makes it a child of bar. We have two bars, so I'm gonna create two different data points. The first one we'll set to, I'm not going for specific numbers here. It's relational data. We'll keep both of these around this first bar here. So that way the third one, when it goes all the way up, looks way better. And we'll set the second bar there. Now it's time to get into our third bar. Uh, this one I will copy and paste the bar. So you can do that with Control C, Control V. If you do it that way, then it'll set the copy like a child of itself. Or you can do Control D and it just duplicates it and then sets it a layer up. So I'm going to leave the align behavior, but I'm going to delete the value array since it's only one bar. And we'll call this big bar. Holding down Alt and then double clicking. Let's make this visible and drag this down to about where the other ones are. Move this position over and try to line it up to look like they're evenly spaced. And then this one, of course, the height will go all the way up to the top here. Now we've got the bar and I will create another label. In fact, while I'm here, select all of the bars, control G, group them together, 
and I can call this group bars. So in the labels, I can take this text shape, control D to duplicate, and move that over underneath this new bar, make it visible. I do want to make sure that the Y position lines up. Copy the data from the duplicator into my new text shape. So now it's exactly the same height, and it looks pretty even there. Now, because this is the emphasis, I will increase the font size. A 60 looks pretty good. All right, so we have our graph. We have our emphasis bar, we have our emphasis text, and then we have the other two options that will behave and animate the same, but you know, a little offset. They have slightly different data driving them. So that's our graph. And in fact, I think I'm gonna take this graph lines group and just move that graph over to keep my data centered just a little bit more. Now I wanna create a master controller to control all of these groups. So you've seen me do groups, and so now I'm going to create a null object. So I can do control, shift, equal sign, and that creates a null. I'll just call this like master. And then all of these folders, I can drag them in to be a child of master. It acts a lot like a folder, and I assume they're different, <laughs> but I haven't come across like what those differences are yet. But at this point, I wanna create my color palette. Now this can be done ahead of time and you kind of work as you go, or you can be like me and you want to be able to see all the colors interact with each other all at the same time. And so waiting until later can be useful. Uh, luckily you have that flexibility. For my base color, I do want like a light gray. So I'll pick that, drag it into my scene palette and set that as my color of, let's see, maybe those middle lines and then maybe a slightly darker color go all eights, drag that down to our scene palette, and then I will connect that one to the graph lines option here. Stroke color. So I do want these graph lines to be on top of our horizontal lines. So you can just reorder it just like that. Let's make the these two kind of this dark gray color. I actually like that color a lot, but I wanna do something that's a bit more of a difference. So I'll create a dark gray Click and drag that over to bar, change the fill color. Now the way I've organized this, you see there's a problem. When I zoom in, the bars are on top of our bar chart lines. I would much rather have them behind. But I will actually have to split up my graph lines group into two different groups. So I'll take the editable shape and the scale lines group and the scale lines behavior, group those together and say H lines. So that's the horizontal lines. Drag that below the labels. This option one and the bar, I want to be our big emphasis color. Lumi, we did an orange. So maybe I'll do like a bright electric blue. And click and drag that over to the big bar fill color, and then I can click and drag this over to the emphasis label. I'm not sure if I like that color. So let's change that. I wonder if we just go like a green, something like that, maybe a little less saturated. And there we go. The option one and two labels need to be colored as well. So I can do that just by coloring this one text shape layer and I'll just color it that same black or near black color. Fill color. Ooh, that draws a lot of attention to itself. How about this middle gray? Okay, so it doesn't let you make two different connections. So we'll cancel the fill color one. Click and drag. Set to fill color. There it is. Well, you know what the problem might be? I think this black is just a little too noticeable. Double click on it to edit the color. Make this just a little, maybe just slightly lighter. Click and drag this color over to our text shape as well. And then the last design element that we need to do is our big like 6x label up here. Let's go into the text tool, 6x. This is why there's six lines. Change this to black as well center, baseline. I will keep this up next to the top of the bar here. And then we have an additional text layer, longer, Oop, longer, longer, center, baseline. It's about centered. Black, let's try heavy. OK, 
Okay, six times longer. I will parent longer to the 6x and then label this one as 6x. And then connect this with our emphasis color, fill color. Then you have to connect the other text separately. I'll double click that. Maybe just make this a little darker for legibility. And then using control period, can add a background shape. I think it can just be plain white. And there's our graph. So let's work on animating this puppy, shall we? So maybe we'll start with animating the graph in. Start with graph lines and holding down option or alt, double click on graph lines and go to stroke. And I want to animate the trim. So as I drag this, the line like draws on. So we'll go to zero, create a keyframe, holding down control and then right arrow can go forward, maybe nine frames, go to hundred. And then while this is animating on, maybe once it hits the bottom corner, we can take our horizontal lines, go into editable shape two, and inside of the stroke tab, I can animate the width. I'll create a width keyframe there, and then start it at zero. So this way they'll kind of grow onto the screen. And in fact, maybe they should just grow on with the rest of it. Yep, sort of this invisible animation. And I do want to change the opacity. I'll just open up the H lines group, holding down alt and move the opacity down maybe to 50, 30%. The option one and two and, oh, we need to change this text and then option three. Okay. So we need to get rid of the text array link and then can change it to option three. Now I want all of these to animate down kind of from behind the graph going down. I'll show you what I mean. With the labels, here we'll start with option three under the shape tab. So I do want it to end up here. So I'm going to create my position keyframe. So you can use plus and minus buttons to move keyframes left and right. So I'll move this one to the right, maybe nine frames. Take the Y position at the start and move it up. And we do not want to see our text. What we can do to solve that is create a mask. Click the rectangle tool, click and drag down. Call this our label mat. Drag this over to the labels group, click masks, connect to new index, and then it automatically disappears. And you'll notice option three is now gone as well. But when it animates down, it looks like it's coming from behind the graph. We want to do this with options one and two as well. Hold down alt, double click our duplicator. You might be tempted to animate the position. Makes sense, right? You can animate the position up and down. You can see they animate just like option three, albeit at the same time. That's not what we want to do though, because we ultimately want these to animate a little separately. So you come down to shape position instead, set a keyframe. So you'll down control shift left left and then control right i guess that's our nine frames then you can change this y value to be up behind the graph they all animated at the same time at the moment we can use plus plus to slightly offset our option three maybe we'll even go a couple more and then now it's time to time offset so inside our duplicator, there's this shape time offset option. Now, as we click and drag this, you'll see that the animation goes forward and backwards in time. So you right click, add behavior, stagger. And now there's a time offset. It's a little backwards. We don't want it to be option two, then option one. We want it to be one, two, and then three. But I'll show you how to fix that. This stagger layer was created, so we can double click on that. Under this graph button, we can flip the graph around and then option one comes in before option two. And we can make there be a little less time in between the two of them by decreasing this number. Maybe we can split the difference. Nice. Uh, we'll get to the easing and things a little later. So that animates our option one, two, and three, and then animating the bars is very similar. But animating the bars is similar. But after seeing the way that we animated the text, you might be tempted to come in and under duplicator, changing maybe the shape scale. Turn this group back on. Now when you animate the scale, it warps the curves on our graph and we don't want to warp the curves. 
We want them to stay consistent. And the only way to do that is by animating the height, but there's no shape height option in the duplicator. So back in the bar, we do have our size option. The height is yellow. If you remember, you can click right here and it takes us to our value array. So we actually don't even want to animate the bar directly. We want to go to our value array. So I can double click on the value array. In fact, Alt double click. And we have our two values right here. We can just add our keyframes. So value one, our value zero, value one. And I kind of want them to start. See, so we'll go control left, go 12 frames and then set both of these to zero. And then we can offset the animation like so. I think I do want these to come in before the text. Then we'll have them come in just as the lines passing by above. And we can even change our keyframes here to reflect that. So our first set of keyframes there, two frames later, second set of keyframes there. Okay, and now, and now we've got our giant big bar. So option, double click, and we can start right there in the timeline, create a height keyframe, and we'll move that over about 20 frames. So one, two, three, four, while holding down shift, and then setting the height to zero. The third bar, I gave it some squash and stretch and overshoot. We'll go maybe eight frames, set another keyframe. It'll move over to that keyframe, give this uh, maybe a lot of bit of overshoot. Well, not a ton, but <laughs> a little bit. I want to see it like kind of break the bar graph. So now we can change our width as well. So this is our baseline width. This is where it'll be when the animation finishes, which means when the bar is shorter, the width will be wider. And then when it's at its height, it'll be thinner. All right, and there it goes. This will come together quite a bit when I start going into the graph editor. So the last thing to animate now is the 6x longer text and also the entire graph. So we'll let this one come up, let it rest here for a few frames. We'll double click on the 6x here. I pipe the x scale into the y scale, so that way I'm just animating the one and then also animating the position x and y. So we have three new keyframes here. We can select all of these and send all those over to the right by two frames. This will be a very quick animation. I'll drag the scale up to be just massive. So it'll cover the entire composition like this and then move over from the right. So the idea is, is that it's coming in from the side of this bar graph here. Two frames might be a little too little. And then we can also change our 6x visibility bar here to start right there. And we can play through our animation. So that is really fast. Maybe I'll move these frames over one. And then right when it hits, we'll create a keyframe here on master. So alt double clicking, piping the X to the Y, setting a keyframe there on scale. And then we'll go over one, two, three, and maybe set that scale to 0.95. And then we'll go 10 or so, bring that back up to one. You'll see why it's so long in just a second. It's not gonna look right here but we play it through, this is our blocked out animation. And the thing that you always check for with the blocked out animation is to see like, okay, are things coming through at the right time? Are they, Am I hitting the right cues? And I think so. In fact, I'm gonna make this scale down even more and then make that two keyframes as well. Okay, now time for the fancy stuff. I think the first thing will be the graph lines. So I'll select these keyframes here, this attribute, go to the graph editor, and we'll see it right here. And you can scroll in and out with your scroll wheel, and then holding down shift, you can scroll horizontally only. And then if you hold down alt, you can scroll vertically only. Um, in the graph editor, I like just having the graph I'm working with as big as possible. If you remember, this is this line right here. I'll set it to mostly slow down at the end, but then we've got a little bit of ease at the beginning here. Maybe a little bit more. Excellent. So that's our graph lines smoothed out. Next, let's go do our labels. We've got shape position Y, and this is our option one, option two labels. I don't think I'm interested in easing at the beginning, but I am interested in this slowing down as much as we can. Maybe we can make that just a little snappier. Let's try that. Ooh, I like how snappy that is. Okay, and then we've got our 
the text shape copy, which is our special green text there. So this one actually think we might need another keyframe and we'll set these two to be interpolated. So if you hold down shift here as well, then you can keep these handles horizontal. We'll just give this just the tiniest bit of overshoot and then maybe even tighten this side up again too. And if you hold down shift, you can keep the keyframes going just horizontally or vertically. Okay, let's try that. Nice. So that's our labels taken care of. Let's go to our bars. You can select multiples at the same time. Uh, so we can click on our value array values here, and then we can do shift to widen. These have a middle keyframe for some reason, but I don't need it. I can set the interpolation of all of them. Actually, I think I do want a little bit of easing at the beginning and then a lot of bit of easing towards the end. We can see how that looks. And then maybe timing wise, we want the first two to come in kind of at the same time and then the third one to wait a little bit. So just looking around at my timing. So I'll select the option three text and then I'll select the option three bar. So our big bar here try six frames difference. It's a little too much. Okay, that might do us. The big bar now needs to be animated, so we can go back over to the graph editor. Select all these, add our easing, let this thing really slow down towards the end. Now it looks pretty decent. I want to add a little bit of spring to it. And this option is only available if you turn on beta tools, at least at the moment. It might be standard uh, when you're watching this. So you go over to Window, Preferences, uh, at least if you're on Windows, I think Mac, it's under the Cavalry name and then Preferences, like on most Mac apps. And then there's this checkbox by Show Beta Features. So you just turn that on. And then what you can do is you, so you select the frames that you want to manipulate. You click under Magic Easing. Click spring out. So, in fact, I'm going to go back a little bit. I think what I want to do, we'll move these like way over to the side. So we'll go one frame after the end of our animation, or after the height of the animation. Duplicate those keyframes. And then back in the graph editor, we can select these keyframes. Right click, magic easing spring out. So go back and play. It adds just a little bit of spring. So we can even give these a little bit more time to wobble around. And they probably should wobble. Okay, I love this magic easing thing. In fact, maybe I'll shorten that. Nice. The 6x, I'm not going to do any sort of easing on that, but I am going to do some on our master scale. I'll zoom in quite a bit to see what I'm doing. Create an interpolation here. I don't want to ease that much, I don't think, but just a little bit of easing I think looks really good. Then we select these last two keyframes, magic easing, spring out. Oof, even that's a little too fast. So this is why the keyframes are going out so far, because it, it has to give time for the uh, spring to settle. We have another 15 keyframes. Let's see what that does. Let's try another 10. Ooh, that's not enough either. Okay, let's try that. All right, so we'll cache out our animation and watch it back in full speed. And, and it's cached. Very nice. Well, hopefully this was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments or if you know a better way to do this, like please feel free to give me tips in the bottom. Thank you.